He switched out her lollipop for <laughs> See if she notices. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's penis I was talking about. Is it, yep. Kirk Cameron's to be exact. And I'm let's at least sort of let's at least recognize he was he was cute as fuck back then, wasn't he? Oh yeah. Jesus, he was adorable. Kirk All Cameron? Right. Yeah, uh-huh. Whole fucking movie. Giving me growing the, uh, pains. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It was penis again. Thank yes. you. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Hello and welcome to God awful movies live from New York City. <laughs> No, I, I I will do this all fucking night, yeah. This is the podcast where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because, well, you came all this way. Of course, I can't do this alone, so please join me in welcoming to the stage my good friend Heath Enright. Right. Lovely. Hello, everybody. All right. I was hungover earlier today. Now I'm back to drunk, feeling great, ready awesome. to go. Awesome. It's healthy. The- My mom's here, too. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I bet you've been wondering where all that tuition money went. Well, <laughs> I believe this off-off Broadway theater answers your question. <laughs> Broadway's just on the road, really, if you think about it. It's right there. So it's right there. So, and also joining us in a disturbing state of dress, no doubt, please put your hands together for my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. I should, I should explain to the listeners at home that Eli is wearing um, a thing for which, thankfully, there are no English words. They should have sent a poet. <laughs> Hi, Heath's mom. I'm here for perspective. <laughs> Heath's mom is going home tonight. He's not the weirdest one. <laughs> He's not the weirdest <laughs> came out in clothes. Uh, one of these days, one of these days, I am gonna pay Morgan to go back when he comes out and lock the dressing room door from the inside and make him do the whole fucking show dressed and something like that. More like get to do the show dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always on underneath, no. <laughs> We don't have time to take this thing up, to <laughs> peel this thing out of my crevices. Stress, yeah. yeah. Oh. Find a joint from when I was 15. <laughs> Where'd you guys hide your weed? <laughs> Skinny people are weird. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched... A little piece of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Re- really quick, uh, hands up. Who watched this? Who actually watched this? Okay. Smart. A lot of hands. A lot right. of hands. Okay. For the few people that didn't, I'll tell you approximately what happens. <laughs> it's a story about how, I think this is correct, the leftist legal system <laughs> needs to accommodate the biblical idea of Christian orphan slavery. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, we need legal exemptions for sincerely held (laughs) Christian orphan slavery. I think think you're actually right. I think that is correct. Yeah. 1991 was a weird fucking time. He's (laughs) cheating. He's reading off the Supreme Court's notes right now. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, 
If you love the sensitive, thoughtful portrayal of the intellectually disabled of the early 90s, <laughs> but you miss the felonious hijinks of the films of the 1980s, <laughs> you will love this movie. It is really an estuary of decades. Isn't it? If Police Academy <laughs> could turn off a movie, <laughs> it would be this movie. All right, so I have a legitimate question here. How is it that we have gone 382 episodes without ever watching this fucking gem. We're like a couple that falls deeper and deeper in love every year. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die holding hands with just like an even better Christian movie. <laughs> right, is there anything you guys wanna nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go with best worst, Jussie Smollett. <laughs> is in the movie. Making his cinematic debut for yeah. us. If you're not familiar, this is important. Jesse Smollett got caught staging a hate crime against himself and saying he got attacked by Trump supporters, MAGA people. So I just, I want to say this at the beginning. We support Jesse Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Just, just do it better. Just don't right. get caught. Right. I like people who frame Republicans who don't get caught, is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, frame a racist cop next time, right? right? Yeah. If you frame a white cop for a hate crime, he probably did one. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you're framing him for something you didn't do. He probably did one. It's safe. Fair. Fair. We support Jesse. Company policy. <laughs> Can I tell you my favorite part of the Jesse hoax? Is that he answered... You have a the, favorite part? Yeah, so... <laughs> Part oh, of his, pretend you're surprised. Nobody's <laughs> buying it. Part of his crazy, insane toddler lie was that they, these marauding Trumpers had a noose and they threw it over his head. But he answered the door with the noose still around his neck. <laughs> like he wouldn't have removed it. <laughs> I just love the idea of that skill, you know? It's like when you get a car accident, you're not allowed to move the car right, afterwards. Yeah. It's just like... <laughs> The insurance adjuster has it's to see the neck. noose. Yeah. It's for my neck. <laughs> Could be a break. <laughs> so, all right, so I was going to go with, while we're on the subject of racism, best worst grammar <laughs> Nazi. So the classist and racist nature of, like, proper English and correcting people's English has never been put on better display. Like, if you were going to try to, like, give an example of that at a talk... You know, or something like that. Clips from this movie where Kirk Cameron corrects the African-American vernacular every time that Jesse Smollett's character uses it would probably be the perfect example, or exemplar, rather. I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst portrayal of an intellectually disabled person. <laughs> Y'all, this performance... I think the fact that Jesse Smollett was present for this performance means he was technically did receive a hate crime and like sure. it carries over. <laughs> no, that's right. That's two hate crimes. So the one he didn't know, he They cancel. <laughs> they cancel. This, I would pay anything. And look, she's not busy. I would pay anything to interview this actress and be like, tell me about your process, James Lipton style. <laughs> God. She'd be like, well, I stood in front of a mirror, a la Stanislavski, and I went, <laughs> and then I really built from there. <laughs> the same way Sean Penn does all of his parts. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what, we've waited 382 weeks for this breakdown, so I guess another minute or two won't hurt, but we'll be back in a flash with all the child-snatching antics of... A little piece of heaven. Oh, 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 no. Hey, Santa, what's the matter? Oh, hey there, Twinkle Toes. It's these little boys and girls. They're all asking for cellular phones, but Santa doesn't have the heart to give them one. Well, why's that? Because of the fees, Twinkle Toes. Big cell phone companies' contracts are full of hidden fees, extra charges, and just a ton of headaches. Well, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? What's 
Mint Mobile. That, that's a point for Santa, for the record. Santa, not Eli. That's a Santa point. Heath, get out of the sketch. Cheater is Santa point. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? What kind of chimney swoop and magic do they need to do that? Well, by going online only with eSIM and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. It's true. I switched over to Mint Mobile when they became a sponsor, and I get the exact same service for a fraction of what I was paying before. Oh, uh, who's who's this guy? Oh, he and Heath are doing some kind of point thing. Uh, I don't really understand. Uh, it's too it. meta. Bring it back in, buddy. You bring it back you in. You bring it in. For a limited time, buy any three months Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to fifteen dollars a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Oh, thank you, Twinkle Toes. You've saved Christmas again. Yeah, so uh, can you make the podcasters leave? Still waiting on that Uber. That's a callback to a different show. Oh, no, I know. I know. From the makers of A Little Piece of Heaven comes the heartwarming tale of a professional football player who's lost the love of his life. Nicole, you have to take me back. No. And the dastardly dude who gets between them. Look, Ron, I respect you a ton, but I feel like me and Nicole really have a chance. Sorry, man. She's mine. He'll have to assemble a dream team to tackle this problem once and for all. Gosh darn it, Nicole. I know you're the one for me. From BWE Films, OJ Can You See. BWE, all our movies will stand up to time just fine. <laughs> Octoroon. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back and so we're going to open this movie up with Kirk Cameron and Kirk Cameron's dad and his sister they're just wrapping up a visit to Cancer Mom's grave so we're going pre-Cancer Mom in this one mm -hmm. getting it out of the way early that counts for bingo though right? no I think so yeah, yeah for okay. bingo purposes the opening line of this movie we get a little bit of like the kind of B-roll that politicians use to, in their ads to establish their rural cred and then we get this amazing opening line. Kirk Cameron says, Dad, if I'm going to be a pig farmer, then I don't need to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're starting with Kirk Cameron's real life, a conversation <laughs> that 100% happened in his real life. Kirk, we picked up your cell phone call with your dad before the shot. Do you want us to cut <laughs> that from the... No, leave it. <laughs> leave it. But his dad's trying to convince him to go to college. We also, this is where we get our first glimpse of how the sensitivity of their portrayal of the mentally disabled sisters. Think the sensitivity of Donald Trump talking about that one disabled reporter. Yeah. But he starts to have a stroke halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> Which would have been super funny, right? Like we can all admit. <laughs> if Trump had died just being like, being healthy. <laughs> And everyone was just sitting there being like, get him, Donnie. Let me, I, I have to text Andrew and ask how much I'm allowed to laugh at that. All right. It would be funny if is in green in the document we have. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, do you know the Young Republicans Club? Is that, no, you know what yeah, talking Okay, about. moving on. Just saying All it's right. 140 of us. So, so they're driving over from the cemetery. You tell the plot. I'm they're not driving doing over the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're driving over from the fucking cemetery, still bitching about going to college. The handicapped sister and the dog are in the back of a fucking pickup truck. 1991 was a fucked up time, y'all. Okay, but the fact that the dog and the handicapped sister are in the back... It makes it feel like a they go back there situation. Yes. yes. I, if I were staging this scene, I'd be like, let's not, do, let's not equate. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, and this is where um, Kirk and the family are going to stop by the orphanage. This is where we're going to meet Oscar-winning, Golden Globe-winning, 
seven-time Emmy-winning, BAFTA award-winning Cloris Leachman. How did they get Cloris I Leachman? I don't fucking this? know. It's a TV movie with Kirk Cameron? Yeah. Jesus, that was She's just kidnapped so sad. like some yeah. of the characters. <laughs> yeah. Will yeah. be. It looks, pay attention to her blinks during yeah, the yeah. movie or something. Yeah. She does try to switch characters several times throughout the movie. This makes sense. Yeah, right? Trying to make up her own movie. <laughs> So, but then this is where the, the, we get sort of the inciting incident of the movie where she explains to them that her orphanage that she runs is going gonna, is, is gonna to be shut down and all of the kids are going to be sent to an evil farm upstate, I guess. Yeah. Okay. The Braskin facility. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, but that's sort of the plot of the movie. It like is. That, yeah. That is going to happen. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So we get that scene, then we get that night. Kirk's dad is reading some history to Violet, that's the, the sister, while she works out on a stationary bike. We're going to get this scene several times. I mean, she was like, I'll do this really, really problematic character. You have to let me ride my Peloton the yeah, entire right. time. Yeah, right. That's, my... that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm not going to forget leg day over this shit. Yeah. There's a real... Because she tries to stop at one point, and dad's like, come on, you're already... <laughs> Nobody wants a fat. Okay. 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 I was, oh, I, get, it's not me. Get ready. I would love, I love them. It, but, no, I like it. Let me explain. I like it better. I think. You want to know. I can save this. Me and Morgan can save it. I'll tell you that much. It, <laughs> You know when you see one, and, <laughs> and you notice, and you, you're cool, but if it's, if, if they're, it, they're, the, they, if they are bigger, you're like, oh, nice. <laughs> For them, No, you get, did save it. You still saved it. Saved it. Perfect. Jesus fucking Christ. Guys, it's, it's going to get worse from here because that, that word shows up twice in this fucking movie, mm -hmm. though, right? All right. So, and I should also point out that Kirk Cameron comes into the scene. He's reading this thing from some old history book or whatever. Kirk Cameron comes into the scene way too goddamn late and leaves this poor actor to just read boring history for way too long. It's like, it's like he's fucking with Eli at the beginning of a skit. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Eli's like, I'm doing uh, jumping jacks at the beginning of this. And he's just like, Rah. Round, round, and you just let him go for like a good ten minutes. He vomited once. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I can't even make the noises of jumping jacks, let alone. <laughs> if I did a jumping jack right now, I would just fold neatly in half, <laughs> split cleanly down the middle, like a Kinder bar. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know when you see a big one and you're like, nice. Exactly right. <laughs> So, so anyway, so Kirk comes in with some fun facts. We learn that Kirk is adopted at this point in the movie. Then we cut to him the next day. He's in the pig pen, sharing all his character's motivations with a pig. The sister comes in and he grammar Nazis her, right? She's like, me and Lucille. He's like, Lucille and I. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Fuck you. I'm me and fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? How old's the earth, Kurt? I mean, do whatever they wrote yep. in the script. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look, I'm touching my junk, Kurt. Touching it. <laughs> touching it. Ladies and gentlemen at home, he's touching it. I'm um, touching so it. Got to keep the listeners. The reindeer nose is still under the shorts, too. So there's a real... There's a real vim. I'm trying right. to get the bells. Right. The bells are still there. The bells are still there. This is the next two hours. That's all right. That's gonna distract yeah, me so, so much. Yes. I'm not gonna look at it. See? Well, if they get, don't make me get out the laser pointer. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, so Kirk is in the pig pen. The, the sister comes in and she says, "Why? Hey, I got a question for you. Dad is is laying down asleep in the back of the truck. Why would he do that?" Okay, so he went there to die, is what they say. Yes, saying. exactly. He exactly. went to the back of a pickup truck. Well, I, to die, like. 
Is that like an ice flow for rednecks? Do they? Do, do we have any Southerners? Do like I mean, any I get of your why grandparents? You're asking me, yeah. Go on. Did one of your Lucinda? Did your dad? <laughs> oh. Boo, he Go to, said the worst thing of the podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you, if we remember anything from tonight, it's what Heath just said. I'm going to forget everything else that was said tonight because of that joke. <laughs> so, Mom, where did Dad go? Uh, Jesus Christ. Dead parents. So, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you try to black best I friend a dead dad? <laughs> No, mine is dead. They're both in hell. It's fine. <laughs> or not hell. I mean, probably hell. But so the void. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. So okay. We're two scenes into the movie. <laughs> Before we started, Noah goes, hey, I'm going to put the little timestamp for where we should be at each minute after this. And I was like, you do that, buddy. <laughs> Like talking to a guy who's dying in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, you're the, gonna, guys, the, the we're gonna credits. get you patched up and we're gonna be done in Act One in the Eight Twenty Five. <laughs> you're damn right we are, buddy. <laughs> Big Tenant Stewardess is all the way back to LA. <laughs> <laughs> That's the choppers now. <laughs> Close your eyes and get some sleep. Uh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, you were not even through the credits yet, guys, yeah. So, okay. And then we get this weird-ass eulogy from the preacher man where he basically, he says that, like, God probably had a pretty good reason for killing off the dad and, and at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, it's a really, it's, it's called uh, Nunya. <laughs> <laughs> Nunya, fuck. One time, I need somebody to interrupt that pastor speech and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> God. Yeah. Dad died for a good reason. And he goes on, he's like, you know, Cecil was a great man. That's the dad. Cecil was a great man. He even raised that daughter of his, you know. <laughs> oh, God, so rough. What he literally, what he says is he goes, one child, you know, <laughs> and one adopted. So, and that's, and does like a look to the audience. <laughs> like we're going to be like, oh, not even his. Right, yeah. That's basically a pet that can talk. I'm so <laughs> proud of him. <laughs> And that eulogy resolves with a quick, like, uh, series of shots of now Kirk Cameron has to do all the stuff Dad used to do. He has to take over the household. He's 18 now, so he has to read boring history to the sister when she's on her Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> they have a sadness meal for Thanksgiving. They, they gather on the table, have some sadness together. Mm -hmm. The sister <laughs> suggests a double suicide, I do believe. Okay, this is, this is what I thought, because she says... I want to go to heaven and see Mama and Pop Pop. And I thought she was going to, like, pull out a gun with two bullets. <laughs> yes, right, right. But no, she means I don't know that heaven's not a real place. <laughs> Which is a little less sad. Yeah. <laughs> but then yes. Kirk Cameron's like, love where your head's at. <laughs> <laughs> Put our heads together. <laughs> Believe me, I've thought about it, okay, yeah. Violet? Oh, Trust, every night when you go to sleep, I'm just like... <laughs> He's talking about the real Kirk Cameron, not the character. Kurt, it's yeah, okay. No. It's okay. And Candace Cameron. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's the worst. She's the worst. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, then we get Kirk and Violet the next day. They're doing chores together. And this is to show that, like, it's too much for him to try to do all the pig farming chores and take care of his sister, right? And so the way they portray this is by having her try to do the, I guess... Shit troweling. Shit troweling. And she, and she fucks it up, right? She like gets a, a trowel full of shit down her shoe and freaks right the fuck out the same way that anyone in this goddamn room would, right? With a fucking trowel full of pig shit in their shoe. Mm -hmm. This is a reasonable reaction. <laughs> he comes out there, he's like, sorry, the prank got away from me. <laughs> so, I gave you a trowel. It's... There's really no reason for you to do that. You're moving the poop from here to there. It's just pretty much the same spot. The pigs don't and, mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now we're going to cut to the pharmacy for a little bit more uh, exposition. This is where we learn that there's a new kid coming into the orphanage, and his mom is, quote, in jail on that crack business. Mm -hmm. I put my nose on a million dollars. That's going to be the black kid. <laughs> 
I wrote in my notes, I was like, his mom works for the FBI? <laughs> That's cool. The FBI introduced crack in the yes, 19... 19- okay. You're thinking of the CIA, and no, they didn't. CIA, that's the... <laughs> it's a different lie that I think slummy yes, itself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the pharmacist is also like, she's like, yeah, you know, this new kid's coming in, and he's going to have it really rough, and they're going to send him to the farm upstate. You know, the lady who runs the orphanage, Cloris Leishman, was telling me the other day, like, she would much rather somebody kidnap the kids and trick them into thinking they were dead than go to the evil farm upstate. Why, well, that would be just morally permissible. I wanted him to be like, Wow, you say that every time I come in here. That's weird. <laughs> so, and then we get, I, I would say probably the toughest scene in the movie, because this is where we have to meet, like, the abused little girl and her abusive mom. They, they come into the thing, and the mom slaps her and everything. And there is a glorious second, though, in this scene, where you think Kirk Cameron's going to beat the shit out of the abusive. Because <laughs> yes. the music goes like, ba 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 And honestly, if Kirk Cameron had just run and scissor kicks this woman in yeah. the chest... Right, right. This if that had been his, like, his proving the scene or whatever, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I was hoping We're for that too. We're not gonna take it. <laughs> By the way, you can beat up people who hit their kids because oh, yeah, exactly. they agree with you that it's the best way to change someone's behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm, te- I'm, I'm texting Andrew now. <laughs> But I, I think you're right. I think you're right. That was, my instinct tells me. He's just going to send his back back audio. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but it, it, this was a really dark kind of moment for me, like, right? Because then the little girl walks out, and everybody, like Kirk Cameron and his sister, and the pharmacist are all standing around together, and they're like, uh, "Oh, that woman, she's always hitting her kids." And I'm like, "Man, that's that's that was the '80s, right? Where like everybody knew that somebody was hitting their kids, and all they did about it was fucking gossip. That's some sad shit." Anyway, sorry to bring the mood down. <laughs> so, okay. So that night, Violet is saying her prayers. Kirk is watching her get into bed like some kind of fucking creep. It's a little weird. There's a lot of sexual tension between these two characters. A lot! I, and she drops the character to do it. She'll be like, I don't like it when we go to... Audience at home, Eli is now giving... Giving me the fuck me up. Lollipop! And you're like, Jesus! <laughs> so, I long for a Folgers commercial. So, <laughs> this movie was very narrow cast for Heath. That's what we're saying. So, we switched out her lollipop for. <laughs> <laughs> see if she notices. So, Jesus Christ. It's penis I was talking about. It, yep. Kirk Cameron's to be exact. And let's at least let's at least recognize he was he was cute as fuck back then, wasn't he? Oh yeah, Jesus, he was adorable. Kirk Cameron, yeah, uh huh. Whole fucking movie giving me growing pains. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It was was penis again. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, one person. Yeah, audience at home, one person in this show. Liked that joke. He meant penis. <laughs> it was front row, though. So, okay. Yeah, yeah no, it's good. That's yeah. if you're only going to get one, yeah. that's the one to get. That's why we All do right, the live so. shows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he goes. So she goes to bed. He goes downstairs to watch the news. And he watches some news about how you know a child is beaten or molested every 13 seconds in this country, and why it's gotten to be where they'd all be better off being kidnapped and taken to a home where they pretended they were dead and in heaven. Well, there's one thing the news anchor says that I found very disturbing. He goes, will it ever be possible to make laws to stop this? And I was like, did I miss something about the 80s? <laughs> did we not have those? I feel like we I had thought those. We had them. I feel like that was like the sixth law we came up with, <laughs> right? They were like, murder, theft, government, taxes, <laughs> roads. And someone was like, hey, man, you did roads before kid fucking. And he was like, kid fucking. No, obviously. <laughs> Don't interrupt. <laughs> so, right. But this is where the news guy is like, we need to make heaven on earth yes. by making yeah. laws against that. What can you do? And it's like saying it to Kirk right, Cameron. Right. And we watch Kirk Cameron be like, you're saying steal some orphans. Got <laughs> Yes. And that's yes. what he will do now. That's the plot of the movie, yes. Is he steal orphans, is what I said. Like, yep. That's really going to yep. happen. Not just orphans, too. It's amazing. So, 
Kirk and Violet, they go to visit the orphanage, you know, because he's got to find the right one. You don't want to just pick up any fucking orphan. So, and this is where we introduce Janet, the fucking faux love interest. Okay, I have so many theories about this love interest, because this scene, she is established as the love interest. Obviously. And then literally she vanishes from the movie. They'll be like, she had an allergic reaction to Kirk Cameron's crying, or whatever the fuck yeah. the excuse they make. Yeah. I can only imagine that this woman either got food poisoning halfway <laughs> through, or an alternative theory, which we will propose a little later. I think I share your alternative yeah. theory. Yeah, we'll learn about it at, well, almost Act 3. But anyway, so they go to the, the orphanage. We meet Janet. She's the social worker that's going to help transition the kids to the evil farm upstate. So we cut to him. He's, <laughs> this is such a fucked up scene. We cut to Kurt Cameron checking the files on this new kid coming in to find out how much he weighs so he knows how many roofies he's going to have to give the kid to knock him out to make him maximally... I'm not making this Seriously, shit up. This, that is the scene. He's flipping through a file being like, okay, this kid's... I only have one rag of ether. That's <laughs> way too big. Was anyone kidnap. else picturing him like going past my file and being like, ooh, the Eli... <laughs> 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 no, what am I going to tell people that I got horses yeah. on the farm? No, we're not fine. <laughs> Jesse Small. No, don't get me wrong. I like it when they're big because you know they're. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're happy. <laughs> there we go. Jesse Small. This is. So. so he says, uh, uh, Janet walks in while he's checking the files. Our... My file was fat too for some reason. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, but, so Janet walks in while he's checking the files. And he's like, oh, wait, wait, I wasn't doing anything suspicious, were you? And she goes, no. And he goes, where is the, the new kid? Where, what bed will he be in? For normal reasons, just not. If you had to describe him, it would be like small, medium, <laughs> like a one-ragger <laughs> of ether. Never mind. Well, and this is the thing, because we, we read the blurb, we knew this was about him kidnapping kids, making them think they go to heaven, blah, 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 blah. But up until now, this is just a movie about him finding the right orphan to roofie. Yep. Right? That's the movie that we're watching. He, it but, is he the... fucking he drugs a brownie Bryce Blankenagel style. Yes. And then he puts a note on it that says, don't tell. Yes. Yes. Hey, hey, everybody, if you ever find a brownie that says, <laughs> don't tell, Tell. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely tell. Ah. Uh, so he sneaks his eat me brownie under this kid's fucking pillow. We got to Cloris Leachman closing out the night on the uh, at the orphanage on a Goethe quote. So weird. <laughs> Cloris Leachman's like, I'm doing my Goethe though. Yes. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to work on a monologue from a play I'm doing at the old Vic. Whatever you want, Cloris. Yeah, right. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Later, I'm going to be a fire engine. Whatever you say, Cloris Leafman. <laughs> Ooh. So, okay. So that night, we go, we go back to the farm. Violet's in bed, wishing that she lived at the orphanage where all the awesome, unkidnapped kids are. Kirk tells her, he's like, don't worry. I got a plan. Christmas is going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm going to kidnap some orphans. Yep. <laughs> Yep. To be farm slaves, yep. but also your friends. <laughs> right. Two birds. So we hadn't pointed that out yet, but that he like he keeps pointing out, and they're like, and I'll have more help on the farm. So he's planning on putting these fuckers to work. <laughs> so one of them will be Jussie Smollett. So yep. Yes. The first in fact. So okay. So it's we, we cut to Kirk out on his orphan napping adventure. And the first thing he needs to do is create a distraction, right? Okay. But first. We have to mention the music at oh, this please, moment. Oh, please, yes. I felt bad for the music, the soundtrack, music, people, the pit right. orchestra, whatever it was. They're just like, the director wrote down jaunty orphan kidnapping music. <laughs> what the fuck would that be? Oboe guy, do you have a bon piano? Bon, 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 oh, okay. Bon, okay. Bon, yes. bon, 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 oh, you know what? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Keep going with that. Bon, bon. This <laughs> So, okay, so he creates a distraction. He, he breaks open the chicken coop. All the chickens escape. Everybody runs out to get the chickens, except, of course, the kid who's eating the drug brownie. So then while they're all doing that, he runs upstairs. 
it's going to get so much fucking worse. Just, just I, I, they don't have seat belts in these fucking things, but it is going to get so much worse before it's all over. So he runs upstairs. There, it, there's one kid sleeping, and he's sleeping because they have to do the re fucking reveal where he posts on the sheet. So the kid's sleeping like a corpse in a goddamn morgue, right? Mm -hmm. He's got the sheet all the way up over him. And we get this incredible fucking moment. Yeah, right. No, everybody who watches it, they're like, oh, yeah. no, they got to get to that moment. They got to. No, seriously. They got to address this moment in the movie. We're describing an orphan kidnapping, and it's, it's about to get problematic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. To be clear, it's we, we didn't get there yet. So he pulls back the plane, <laughs> and he goes, "You're black." <laughs> Okay. And then it's so much better. It's so much better than that. Because if that was the end of the scene, it'd be my favorite thing in my screensaver. <laughs> but then they spend six minutes of Kirk yes. Cameron explaining to an unconscious black child <laughs> how he doesn't have a problem. <laughs> then, yes. Don't get me wrong, some of my best friends well, like, are he you know. just tried to do a secret handshake with a bouncer at a bar he doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know why. No, you know when you find one and you're like, oh, black, it's good. It's good. I like it. Like the large, when they're large. No, no. He actually says that. He says, it's cool that you're black. Said Kirk Cameron to Jussie Smollett. Unconscious Jussie Smollett. <laughs> who was 12. Like, this just gets worse and worse with every modifier, yes. I'd say, like, we know what that kind of trauma does to a kid, but now we know what yeah, that trauma does to a kid. That's fair. And That's we fair. support it. And we support it. All right. Frame Republicans for crimes. But he does... That is the lesson Dude, of today. Not even, we're not even indicting the ones for the crimes we already know they fucking did. I mean, we don't need to... So we got to get something on them. Okay, all right. No, that's fair. That's fair. I heard it. I heard it. All right. Well, now that Kirk Cameron has, I guess, made peace with Jussie Smollett's race, I guess we can take... That's what happens in the fucking movie. Back me up, people. We can take a quick break, but we'll be back soon with even more of A Little Piece of Heaven. And then we stuff the goose, I'm sorry, into the partridge? This can't be right, Heath. This is horrifying. Hey, fellas. What are you up to? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I were just trying to make some, you know, holiday recipes, but they all take hours and hours. And they are Lovecraftian horrors. Do you even know what a sweet bread is? I, I do, Heath. Thank you. So wh why don't you guys try HelloFresh? Oh, what's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Don't get me wrong, Noah, that sounds great, but how's that going to help over the holidays? HelloFresh's festive eats makes mealtime a snap. Choose from holiday-inspired dinner recipes, seasonal add-ons, or even three-course offerings, all designed to make holiday meals extra yummy and easier than ever. And whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at HelloFresh Market. From quick breakfasts to charcuterie boards and desserts, it will never be easier to prep for a party and to fill your pantry. It's true. I started as a HelloFresh customer even before they became a sponsor, and I use HelloFresh Market all the time. All right. Well, I'm sold. Where do we sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful18 and use the code Awful18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful18 and use code Awful18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping? That's right. HelloFresh, because nobody but a medieval torturer should have to spatchcock anything. And we can put that camera just right over there. Yeah, that'll be, fine. that'll be fine. Hey, fellas, got a second? Sure, Kirk, uh, what's up? <clears throat> sure, TV's Kirk Cameron, what's up? I'm not going to be doing that. Right, right. So it's about the scene where I discover Salem. Right, to take him to the farm, sure. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't I be surprised that he was black? Um, Why would that matter? Well, I... You know, because he's black. Right. No, we we got that, Kirk. Uh, why would him being black be a problem for your well, I mean, character? It's a, it, people notice, you know, a black kid. He's, he's black. Black. Please stop saying black. Please stop. Thank you. Okay. Kirk, you know what? Uh, we'll put something in the script to mention it. How about that? Awesome. 
Yeah, thanks, Ace. Also, did you get my notes on the lines? Yeah, uh, we are running all of your suggestions past the ACLU, and everyone that isn't a hate crime, we're going to try to use, okay? Well, how many are hate crimes now? Uh, that's all of them. Yeah, got it. Black. Okay. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> So we're going to rejoin the action here back at the orphanage where Janet and Cloris Leachman are fretting over the newly missing kid, right? No, I hate to argue with you on stage. Would we call this fretting? Because <laughs> Cloris Leachman is like, yeah, no, one of them got away. Oh. <laughs> but you know I wasn't. <laughs> so. Well, so, well, okay, all right. But see, here's the thing, though. We get possibly the most disturbing line of the entire fucking movie, and that's saying something in this scene right here, Right? Because Cloris Leachman is on the phone with the cops, and she says, and I quote, yes, his color should keep him from getting too far in this community. And the cop's like, yeah, no, of course. I mean, if you see something black, you say <laughs> something white, and then... <laughs> I'm not no. even allowed to grill out here. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, what the hell? No, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. So then we cut up, uh, over to Kirk and, and Violet at the farm. Even Violet's like, this is a stupid fucking idea, man. What the hell were you thinking? And then little Jussie comes down and wants to know what the fuck's going on. Now, I would point out at this point that when Kirk kidnapped him, he forgot to get his, his baseball cards, and now the kid's really upset because he doesn't have his baseball cards. It's the only thing he owns because he's this orphan that goes from you know, one orphanage to another, whatever, whatever. But there's no reason to point that out because it never fucking comes up again or matters in any way in this stupid-ass movie, so I'm not going to bother. I am going to point out that the kid goes like, also, where are my shoes? Kirk took his shoes? I don't... <laughs> hey, man, did someone bathe me while I was asleep? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Because I am clean. <laughs> It feels more of like a remove DNA evidence situation than... <laughs> okay. All right. A clean situation. So... Is your mate Casey Anthony? All right. <laughs> okay, interesting. Found a line. You found right, a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've had an interesting line. I found the room's, yeah. like, room was like, ha, 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 done. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got it. You don't make you fun know, of Casey you, Anthony. You, you always do, Eli. Innocent <laughs> woman. <laughs> Her and Edna did not do it. Okay. <laughs> you feel that was a mix. That was a mix. <laughs> Show of hands, Adnan did it. Okay. All right. All right. Wow. Let's make our audience fight each other. <laughs> so, that's what the internet is for. Oh, and then my job is to transition back to this fucking movie, guys. It's, like, it's, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> Let me tell you. He does this every week. You just so, don't hear yeah. it. So yeah, so, so we get Jussie and Kirk, they're fighting and everything. He's like, I, I'm leaving, man. This is some fucked up shit. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And Kirk's like, you can't leave because, um, um, <laughs> you died in a fucking fire last night, and this is heaven. That's the lie the man comes up with. You know how they say the lies people come up with tell you a lot about their imagination? <laughs> This movie indicates a really deep psychosis within Kirk Cameron's character. That he was looking at Jesse Smollett and he was like, You are a murderer. <laughs> Burned all over. <laughs> to Chris. Dash. God damn it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Blah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, that's, that's his lie. He's like, he's, and, and, and Jesse is suspicious. He's like, wait, so he, you're telling me heaven is a, a fucking pig farm in rural upstate New York? With you, Kirk Cameron, <laughs> is heaven. And a yes. girl who still has her intellectual disability? Yes. <laughs> yes. Why would yep. it smell like this, man? <laughs> So, and, and, and that's where Jesse Smollett goes, right? He's like, he's asking for details. Like, he's like, okay, so, uh, so wait, so how did you die? Right, and of course, Kurt Cameron's character is so fucking stupid that he can't answer anything normal. He's like, shot in the head, in a, a bank robbery, bank robbery, by pirates, 
And I was a ninja. <laughs> and then I fucked a lady in Canada right before it. And then the but bank robbery. But before. it wasn't my sister. <laughs> it was all the women that aren't my sister. All of them. Except Cloris Leachman. Yeah, not... Five Canadian orgasms. So was... <laughs> Uh, That's uh, like seven uh, American ones. A, A, A. So, and then this is where we get my best worst for the first of like 36 times where the, where the kid says, you know, what would you be talking about? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, dude, shut the fuck up, you son of a bitch. And of course, you have to imagine the white guy writing the lines for Jesse Smollett's character as well. You also have to imagine the moments where the white director and white cast came up to Jesse Small and they were like, oh, you, trust me, you're going to be a real hoot in this movie. You talk very urban. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. What were you going to say? You talk very, in the movie, you, Jesse, you're going to talk <laughs> a lot. You know how... <laughs> you like Michael Jordan, right? Love it's him. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, this is where Jesse's like, wait, if this is heaven, how come there aren't any other black people in it? Yes! And Kirk is, at first, Kirk is like, well, I mean, you know, it's just, are you going to make me say it? And then, and then Jesse goes like, well, but Martin Luther King would be here at least, right? Ooh. And you watch Kirk Cameron be like, actually, no, he didn't make, nope, nope. <laughs> he's around here somewhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he says he's around here, which means that there is a scene somewhere where Kirk Cameron blacks up to convince oh, Jesus Jesse. He's, Martin. He's like, Jesse, stay in your room. Guess who's here? Dr. Luther King. Well, hello there, Jesse. <laughs> oh, okay, Eli, look into my heart. That exists on a cutting room no floor. Question. That is 100%. Yeah. I feel like in some unit, I can picture it. Can you picture yeah, Kirk Cameron dressed as MLK? No question. That happened in... Re he tried to improvise it I feel every like time. They, every time. Every time they ran too long, he was like, well, hello, and Jesse Smollett punched him in the face. <laughs> and that's how they knew the shooting day was over right. on a little piece of heaven. Yeah, right. It's so, I don't want to call this the Mandela effect because it feels like a bad time to use that, but yes. <laughs> you know, it's not... But the bears are Jewish. It's fine. It's memory. It's the bears. It's a, yep. So, okay. What? So that night... The Roths, the Bear Child Bears. Yeah, the Roths. Whatever they are. Yeah. You know, the Jew Bears. Yeah. They're Jewish it's Bears. Effect, they go yeah. to heaven. Yeah. There's something. I don't know. Positive. All right. So that night. <laughs> they have more money than the other bears. <laughs> statistically. Statistically. <laughs> they wore clothes. I just... <laughs> No, because if you think about it, Yogi really doesn't, right? Yeah, yeah right. no, you're right. You're right. Smarter than your average bear. <laughs> yeah. But not the smartest. Not the... Right. The, the birds, pretty bears, good. they're the ones who do they're the best the ones. On the That's what I'm saying. Best, and then Yogi's yeah. below them. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we'll just chop the rank right there. Yeah, we'll yeah, All right, yeah. no, let's, yeah. let's, let's move into a nice, clean edit. So... <laughs> Morgan just dives in front of us. Right, yeah, right. We need to start, like, putting an NDA on the live, fucking live show, sign-in sheet or something. A red laser dot appears on my forehead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Morgan just whispers, it's the ultimate edit. <laughs> Back to the left. All right, so it's... <laughs> so that night... <laughs> They're playing checkers. Jesse's still not buying all this heaven bullshit. Violet is also correcting his speech. And Jesse says, wait, you know what? I feel like, I feel like hell would be more fun than this. <laughs> he said, can I, like, can I switch? And they say, no, and so he storms off. Not the first or the last time someone said, I would rather go to hell than hang out with Kirk Cameron. <laughs> yes. I'm right. So, and then when he storms off, the sister turns to him and he's like, told you, you should have got a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you should have kidnapped a girl surf. Yes. And that will now be the plot. It, uh, yeah. So, okay, so first we have to check back in the orphanage. This is where we have to meet the FBI officer 
whose name was obviously like somebody was trying to come up with it in a hurry, like in an emergency. Jack. Don't say Daniels. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Fuck. His name's Jack Daniels. Name Seriously, the and FBI. The movie never, name's Jack Daniels. Look, and it's not to make some stupid fucking joke. The movie never acknowledges it. Cloris Leachman does, though. Yeah, well, She was yeah. like, you're lying, first of all. That's a liar name. And then she roasts his physical appearance for like five minutes. And she's like, this is what I'm doing. I don't care. And yeah, then like, we'll do the scene after this. Yeah, really wanted like, her to be like, oh, yeah, Jack Daniels. I'm Cloris Leachman. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now we both said a stupid movie-breaking name. <laughs> she's tapping the lens of the camera. <laughs> So and this is also where we established that Janet, the social worker who we thought was the love interest at this point, has gone home with hives. There's no fucking reason for us to ever who? have that information. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. But the FBI agent explains that, hey, look, the kid that you're talking about, he's run away several times before. We have no reason to believe that he didn't run away this time. And Cloris Leachman's like, I think with my gut. And my gut tells me this is the whole plot of the fucking movie. They give her one of the worst lines ever written in a movie here. She goes, I always keep my promises. I promise you're wrong. What does that fucking mean? That means that she's like, if, if it turns out he ran away, I'm going to kidnap him. Yeah. Right? To, keep, would, yeah. to make sure that you turn out to have men That's wrong. That's some monkey paw shit, Gloria. Yes, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm manifesting that child being kidnapped right now so that I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'll secret the shit out of you. So, Jack Daniels. <laughs> Your name's Cloris Leachman now. <laughs> so then we, we cut to a mysterious hooded figure leaving cookies for Kirk Cameron at the farm. That'll come back. It'll be important. But then we immediately... Really? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it'll be relevant, though. But then we moved... We cut immediately from that to Violet... The sister feeding those cookies to the dog. Dogs eating cookies, though. Yeah, that's pretty the, good. I, I watched this over and over. It was awesome. Yeah, no. And then I spent like two hours watching a puppy eat lettuce on a TikTok. <laughs> it's just a puppy in a thing. And it's, I spent a long time. <laughs> so, it's a puppy. And, and well, Where did he get the lettuce? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, why would he? He doesn't have money. He <laughs> doesn't <laughs> <sense. laughs> He thinks these people. <laughs> he goes to a job for money to buy lettuce. <laughs> it's not even dog food. Oh, okay. So Violet, she says, you know, these cookies are good. I found them on the porch. I'm going to pretend that I made the cookies because lying is okay now, right? Because we lied about the kid being in hell. So, you know, tangle what we weave and all that. <laughs> it's a lot like Hamlet, this uh, writing. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So meanwhile, we cut, to, we cut to the barn and we have the scene where like Jussie is getting attacked by a pig. Right. Or staging it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically. <laughs> we support that, though. Oh, he is. He is, though. Knowing what we know now. Yeah. He's For, framing a pig. Framing that like pig. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. I said earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So. That pig did a hate crime. <laughs> Frame Pro a probably. policeman for murder. It's a song now. Uh, okay. Message Andrew Anna? again. Anna? Now I'm just messaging him an apology. I'm just... If you hear someone breathing into a paper bag in California, it's, uh, <laughs> it's our attorney. So, okay. So then we cut to everybody having dinner. Kirk says grace, but then, you know, he gets to the part, our father who art in heaven, and he has to like, oh, we're supposed to be in heaven, so he has to change it last minute. Very funny. Humorous. That's how humor works. Um, <laughs> and then Justin turns around and like, he looks at the table and he goes, like, this is not fucking heaven food. This looks like shitty white people, salt is the only spice, mayonnaise ass bullshit. I just right? want to be clear. We're in heaven. I'm looking at meatloaf, jello, and yes. milk. Yeah. At a pig farm and I'm a surf here. Yeah. This is heaven. That's heaven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> gonna frame you so hard for <laughs> <laughs> fucking Kirk Cameron. So he pushes over his plate. Dressed like MLK. <laughs> I know it was you outside my room. <laughs> Violet storms out. Kirk angrily explains the golden rule. So he's teaching him morality. You know, he's learning valuable lessons. Also grammar. 
I feel like it would be, if someone tried to teach me morality while I was in heaven, I'd be like, up, 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 up. <laughs> Already did it, my dude. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it's fair. It's fair. The game is won. <laughs> What's this? Long division? <laughs> Don't need it. Yes. <laughs> Turned out that being a black orphan who steals baseball cards was my jam. <laughs> Requirements met. D's get degrees. So, I like that long division was your first example of what you'd be avoiding. I was trying to think of a thing I didn't know. You were like, I hate <laughs> long broad division. Category. Okay. So, okay. So, <laughs> So he, uh, Kirk goes up to talk to Violet, and Violet says, look, either you kidnap a little girl to go with Jossie, or I'm out. So Kirk Cameron heads out to... To do that? <laughs> to kidnap himself an eight-year-old girl. Again, the music is like, that's wacky, right? That's pretty wacky. They're just looking <laughs> at their notes. Kidnapping a second orphan. We need Sequel. multiple... Bum, 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 bum. Speed it up. <laughs> Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so now, but he's dressed as an angel this time, right? Because he's got his lie in advance. He's dressed as an angel. He also brought fucking raw steak to distract the guard dogs. It feels, I'm going to say something brave and honest and from my heart. I hope I this really goes badly. that you wouldn't. <laughs> Morgan, just go ahead. And... It feels like he puts a lot more effort into kidnapping the white child. You're right. <laughs> no, you're right. It in retrospect, based on the two scenes, he was his heart wasn't in getting Jesse. <laughs> like if someone walked in, he'd be like, "Oh no, I didn't get Jesse Small." <laughs> oh, All right, back to rehearsal for Violet. <laughs> he actually prays to God here. He does. He didn't yeah. pray when he was no, you're right. giving Jesse Small a you're clay right. and a brownie like a dog <laughs> ground up into peanut butter. <laughs> but at this moment, he's dressed like an angel, and we watch him pray. He's like, "Hey, God, okay, All right, this is a weird one." <laughs> this is a weird one. I know you're watching me right now. I'm dressed like an angel. I'm sneaking up on a little girl in the middle of the night. I have a rag of ether. <laughs> Stay with me. She's <laughs> white this time. So, that oh, yeah. God said yes. So, yeah. So, so, Kirk Cameron throws a rock at her window, which means he knows which bed the little girl sleeps in. Did not think about that. <laughs> Now, this is going to be, this is the little abused girl from the pharmacy, right? So he's just, this, he's just taking this one from, from her parents. So he throws the thing on the window, and she looks out. He turns on his halo. He's got a little Christmas light halo. So he turns on his halo. What the fuck he's plugged into, I have no idea. Just Jesse Smollett standing 60 feet away <laughs> by a fucking champion generator. <laughs> This is bullshit, man. He just fucking drugged me. <laughs> you ain't gonna make her eat nothing? <laughs> I was sick for like six days, man. <laughs> fucking Robert Kennedy Jr. me like fucking Marilyn Monroe, and now she just gets a okay. fucking light show and an invitation. Okay. So, so, so she comes out to see him, and he goes, <laughs> he goes, little girl. You died last night. This is the conversation he has with this little fucking girl. The stay girl he goes, you died last night. Your appendix burst. And she, like, looks as distressed as, as one should in that instance. And he goes, oh, but there was no pain. <laughs> yeah, now it's fine. He says, but you're, you've died, and I'm going to take you to heaven now. And she says, you know, well, my mama told me I was going to burn in hell. And I wrote in my notes, yeah, it's sadistic as fuck to teach children that hell exists, isn't it? Well, because in the movie, Kirk Cameron goes, oh, you know, a lot of grown-ups are wrong about hell. Children never go to hell. And I wrote in my notes, to be clear, Kirk Cameron no longer believes that this. Is, that <laughs> is the case, yes. Kirk Cameron goes back and watches Little Piece of Heaven and watches this scene and goes, Oh, now that's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this movie doesn't hold up. <laughs> I'm going to text For Justin. Oh. <laughs> hey, j Dog. It's watching our movie again. <laughs> Didn't hear from you from that lunch invite. <laughs> Hope you had fun hanging around. <laughs> Kirk. 
So, okay, so they wander off together. She wants to be called Princess now. So they drive in. He's put up a big sign that says heaven over and, and, and big lights. Again, didn't do that shit for Jesse. I wanted the end to be out. It's, it says heave. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Just give me a second. It is heaven, the neon. You just, I don't know if, if one Jesse, goes out on the light. The the what fucking, the fuck? Run on the treadmill, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so he plops. Uh, he then, oh, and the little girl. Like a mouse with. The yeah. little girl decides that she wants her new name to be Princess. Right, so her name is Princess now. I wrote my notes, okay, but if you change it to a symbol, we're going to let the Jehovah's Witnesses OD you on pain pills. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I didn't, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses killed Prince, <laughs> not me. If he had been an atheist, he'd You're be You're the fine. one that killed Prince, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> were you the operative? Oh my God, that's awesome. So, <laughs> so I, I, we do, you do enough live shows, you know, you meet... All kinds of you people. You meet the person who OD <laughs> Prince. Yeah, right. For the Jehovah's Witnesses. So, okay. So he plops Princess down in the bed across from Violet, and then he puts, puts Jesse to work in the pig pen some more. The job he's got for him today is murdering birds. Murdering, I guess. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, murdering. <laughs> so he gives him a little pellet gun, and he's like, you need to kill all the starlings in the, in the eaves. Or they'll shit and the pigs' food and the pigs will eat it and they'll get sick and they'll die. And, and, and Jesse's like, you hear how none of that matches up with heaven, right? Like, nothing that you just said. There's you have no... a shit-based disease, dude? <laughs> <laughs> There's fucking polio in heaven for pigs and yeah. birds? What? Well, the pigs aren't in heaven. The pigs are in hell. Because <laughs> they were all pedophiles. <laughs> That went better than I expected. <laughs> God, I'd ask what you were expecting, but I don't want to know. You know. You know. Yeah. No, Why I do you think did. that pig was so aggressive in Jesse's <laughs> <So, laughs> Jesus Christ. So, and also, I thought this was interesting. This is the other moment that, that Kirk finds problematic, right? Because this is the part where he's like... Uh, He's like, wait, the birds die in heaven? And he's like, no, 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 God recycles the birds. See, God's been doing this recycling thing way longer than we have. And I wrote my notes. It's like, wow, back in 91, you could make a pro-recycling reference without losing your Christian audience. <laughs> Times have really changed. We need to make America great again. So, <laughs> I have some trading cards to sell you backstage. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so we cut to the next morning. Jussie has given Princess a little bit of a heaven orientation. This is where they finally realize they have to acknowledge. He's like, oh, I went out and bought some clothes for Princess this morning because they have to acknowledge at some point that, yeah, like all the stuff would have to come from somewhere that they have for these kids. Right, which means there's a missing scene where Kirk Cameron was buying little girls' clothing and they were like, it's the 80s, it's fine, it's the 80s. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I like that there's a laundry day in heaven. It's just like everybody wearing shitty sweatpants like the last <laughs> one. I feel like in heaven you're always wearing shitty sweatpants, right? Okay, all right, yeah. I'm in heaven? <laughs> Do you think everyone's wearing what Eli wears in heaven? <laughs> Honestly? So comfy on the outside, sex shit on the inside? Yep. Yeah, no, that's right. No, that's that what sounds right. A lot right. of people would wear to heaven. Cutting right into his ass this whole time. So, because you don't want to wear the sex shit in front of grandma's ghost, right? right. No, I get it. She'd be like, Eli. Well, you, you want to wear it, you just don't want her to see. Right, right. Exactly. No, yeah, exactly. It's the best of both worlds. So, is okay. she in heaven? And then there's a. <laughs> I mean, I, not my, my grandma? The yes. embezzler? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Also, I mean, Jewish. Also so, Jewish. <laughs> but mostly embezzler. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you tell a wishy-washy Christian, oh, everybody go, you show her some bank accounts, and they'll be like, okay, Grandma. <laughs> so, okay. All right, so... Good then, for her. Then, <laughs> yeah. So they're all sitting around... <laughs> they're all sitting around, like, introducing Princess to the idea of pig farm heaven, and there's a knock on the door, and it is Kirk Cameron's real-life wife, Chelsea Noble. At 50... <laughs> Joining us tonight, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, so, we could have got her really. I, that's honestly right. We've at least got a cameo to play for yeah. you or something, yeah. we got a third of a bottle of lemon-lime <laughs> beer in. <laughs> but yes, we are 
56 minutes into this fucking movie and we're introducing the love interest. It wasn't Janet at all. Which means, is this, is this where your theory comes in, your other theory? Yes. Yeah. Which means that Kirk Cameron was running lines one night and he was like, Janet, it's so lovely to be on this date with you. And she was like, you're dating another woman? And he was like, um, in the movie. <laughs> and she was like, not if I have anything to say yes! about it. Yes! Write a neighbor into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yes! You fuck me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she barges into the fucking uh, shot. She's just like, no, I'm the love interest now. He's like, I guess you're the love interest now. And of course, he can't let her see. She's the, she's the sexy neighbor that lives next door, I guess, or whatever. He can't let her see all the kids that he's kidnapped. So he's trying to like push them away with his foot and only hold the door open a little bit, you know, whatever. Uh, that was really, I was, just kick, I was just kicking Heath. You can't see it. It was, it was for me. <laughs> you got to picture it. In I'm, the kid, I'm the kidnapped orphan. And you're right. No, right give, okay. give you like one of these. It's Comet Pizza, me. right? So, <laughs> Com Comet Ping Pong. And no, it isn't. So... <laughs> So yeah, so Jesse's, Jesse's tugging at his pant leg, trying to drag him away from the door. He goes away from the door, and he comes back and tells her that, the, oh, my cousin has measles, so you can't come in. She's like, that's all right. I was done with this scene anyway. I'll be back later when it makes more sense. <laughs> so then we get, we get a stupid fucking scene with Cloris Leachman. These are just, they're so depressing. I want to skip over a lot of these. So, so we get Kurt Cameron going for a walk with Chelsea, with a neighbor lady, falling in love, whatever, whatever. And she's, like, she's trying so hard. She goes, like, did you get the cookies that I sent you that had um, my phone number in yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, I got them. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever watched Heath be flirted with... Okay. <laughs> I didn't... I felt like I Let's was... Let's go to the expert. Heath's right. mom. <laughs> Would you say this scene smacked of the familiar? Oh, of course. God. <laughs> I love how consistently she is on our side of these jokes. I'm going to run over so she can dox you later. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give her no fake fucking name. <laughs> Pushed you out of me for seven and a half hours for you to pick your own name. <laughs> What do you share? <laughs> You're not even the one with the bells under his shirt. <laughs> what do you have to hide? <laughs> I'm the one who should change my name. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so they go on their walk. We get a quick scene of Jesse. First, first show for her mom. This is fun. Yes. This is fun. Yeah. This is going to pay for your... No, it's not. <laughs> this is the one... I'm going to need you to pay for my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was not Heath's mom. Yeah, to be way. clear. No, of course it wasn't. That was that April Pop. That was April Pop. That's, that's the I love you too. <laughs> Our, our, our all-time favorite. You guys are all tied for a second. Um, You're fine. So, yeah, so... so <laughs> Tattoo our logo on your body. Yeah. We'll talk. <laughs> Maybe you'll be in the running. So, yeah, we cut back to Jesse and Kirk mucking out stalls or something or whatever, and Jesse still is like, uh, so you're going you gonna to fuck Chelsea Noble? He's like, I sure am. <laughs> and that's that scene. Then we get... We get Cloris Leachman, she calls the, the house, she calls the farm, and she's like, uh, Violet answers. And she's like, you know, I, bought, I baked you guys a, a cake, and I want to bring a lemon meringue pie, actually. It sounds delicious. Love lemon meringue pie. I bet Cloris Leachman made an awesome lemon meringue pie. So, so she's What's like... What's happening I'm, right now, No, <laughs> It got sexual, right? It got so yeah, sexual. It got really sexual. <laughs> Fuck what, the shit out of Cloris think, Leachman's lemon meringue pie. What did you think I meant by pie. lemon meringue pie? All right. I don't mind a little meringue around the mouth. You know, <laughs> <laughs> thing. I was trying to do the math on meringue cum, and yeah. you were faster. Yep, yep. So well done. Not surprised. Well meringue done. is ejaculate. Yep. So, yep. It's quick math, actually. <laughs> I have a weird job. Um, <laughs> meringue. So, 
So yeah, but Violet panics, right? She's like, we can't have Clarice Leachman come by. She'll notice all these orphans that we've stolen. And she's like, you can't come by, you can't come by, we're going on a trip. She hangles, and she hangs up the phone. And then we cut to Cloris. Okay, so in these scenes that I've been skipping with Cloris Leachman, her and the FBI agent have become, she, like, she's become his reluctant sidekick, right? Constantly. She, like, he keeps, she, she keeps showing up, and she's like, I'm with you now. And he's like, oh, all right. Well, you know, as an FBI agent, I am obligated to take on the nearest comic sidekick. <laughs> Which I will be trying, by the way. <laughs> the next time there's like a graphic child murder, I'm just going to show up and be like, bah, 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 bah. Oh, geez. I'm part of it now. <laughs> They're like, arrest that guy. He absolutely yeah, did it. See, he had a jingle. Right. right. You can't have a jingle for he that. He had bells on under his clothes. Yeah, he, he, Trust <laughs> me. Look, frame him. Just, he did something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he did something. He's like a cop. Just trust me. He did it. There's also this weird moment where she's like, you know, they're talking about the, the little girl getting kidnapped, the um, princess getting kidnapped. And they're like, you know, it would have been really loud. I'm surprised your parents didn't hear. And they have this whole bit where he's like, well, you know, drunks don't hear things very well. Is that true? He's, you, what? Is that why you don't? <laughs> I was thinking maybe that's why he doesn't return my texts. And you can't hear that they're coming in. Maybe you feel better. <laughs> But it's, but it's hilarious because they're, they're doing this whole bit about how, like, well, you know, she's like, well, I've never really known alcoholics. And he's like, I know of my whole family's alcoholics. Your name is Jack Daniels, man. <laughs> Stop. Enough. Which makes the name actually funny if you think of the yeah, family. Yeah, right, name. right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I just got a fun. I just got a fun. We're going to name him <laughs> Black Daniels. <laughs> Wait, I thought of a better one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is where we learn that FBI, that Jack Daniels was also adopted. Yeah, and Cloris Leachman likes that. Oh, yeah. And I wrote in my notes, sploosh. And then I was like, well, it's Cloris Leachman, so... <laughs> I don't think at this point in her life it was a sploosh situation. <laughs> More of like a... Really? Yes. So she's like, but she's like, oh, well, now that I know you're adopted, it's okay for me to tell you that Kirk Cameron was also at the, at the orphanage the night that Jussie Smollett went missing. No fucking idea why that would be a therefore type situation. Is there like a code of trust between adopted people and like adoption people? I guess. Or something? I, I, that's what the movie's going for, but I don't know. I, like, but I think this movie thinks that it's just moved the plot along, and I don't have the heart to tell it otherwise. <laughs> so we're going to call that the end of Act 2, but first let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Jussie Smollett's bird shooting skills come in handy later? <laughs> Will he and Kirk share a relevant bird-killing bond before this movie's over? Did that scene really exist for its own fucking sake? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the even more felonious conclusion of A Little Piece of Heaven. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. 34, 36. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, 38 Maple Drive. Oh, hey, Heath. Dude, Eli, what are you doing out in front of Cecil's house? Oh, I, I do this every Christmas. I ring the bell and then I hold up a series of signs about how he should be my best friend because it's Christmas. I'm like, now's the time to be honest about it. Um, That's super not healthy. What? No, it's, it's from the movie. It's like a super yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I know the reference you're making. It's super weird in that movie, too. Hi, I'm No Illusions. Has this ever happened to you? You consume several decades of so-called romantic media that's actually just demonstrable stalking behavior, and now you don't know how to properly court people and don't understand that telling your best friend's wife you secretly love her is inappropriate? Well, then you might need therapy, and there's no better way to get it than BetterHelp. 
As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Oh, so I guess I probably shouldn't do the thing with the signs then. No, huh? you should not. Okay. Hey, Heath, what are you doing at Cecil's house tonight anyways? Oh, yeah. He's having a Christmas. I, I, I mean, I'm also, I was just going to do the sign thing too. Me also. Oh, well, where are your signs? I, 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 I forgot. <laughs> I forgot them in my car. I gotta, I gotta grab them. No worries. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to head home. I'll, I'll, I'll see ya. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll just catch up, catch up with you. Is that a bottle of eggnog? Yeah, yeah. This is this is uh, for for me to drink now uh, outside. Okay. Mm. Mm. It's thick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm out of here. Wait, Salem. You can't go. Oh yeah. Why not? Cause um, cause cause you're dead. I'm dead. Yep. You're you're dead. This is heaven, and you have to stay here forever and, and do the the heaven pig chores. Hmm, that doesn't sound like heaven to me. Nope. It that's yeah. I hear it. it does not. But but if you do your heaven pig chores, you might get a visit from an angel with a Nintendo in heaven. Okay, I don't know about that, but at least I can't die, right? No, no, but you can heaven die, and then you would go to hell, so. Wait, people who die in heaven go to hell? Yep, yep, and they do not get any of the angel Nintendos I was talking about. Hey, man, can I be honest with you? Sure, yeah, what's up? I 100% believe you. Yeah, gullibility is... Kind of going to be a problem for you later in life. What? Nothing. Nothing. It, uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. You're going to be awesome. <laughs> and we're back live from the Big Apple. <laughs> and we're going to rejoin the action here with Cloris trying to get Kirk on the phone and FBI Jack, Jack Daniels, getting <laughs> more... <laughs> <it's> so <laughs> Fucking stupid. Uh, he's getting more and more suspicious by the minute. He's, I guess, redusting all the fingerprint areas now, looking for Kirk Cameron's fingerprints. Mm -hmm. And he finds them. Yes, he does. And he's like, well, I have no idea what to do with these. <laughs> I wrote but in my I notes, it. you know you can just go places as a cop, right? Like, I know you need a warrant to, like, kick down the door and shit, but you can be like, kids? You have a yeah, so yeah, right. Do you have any right. kids? Exactly. No, and I agree with the FBI guy. There's a whole new level of suspicion warranted when you find out Kirk Cameron's involved in something. <laughs> so I get it. There's this weird moment where Janet, like, weeps for the, the love interest that she could have been, I guess. You know, he's like, there's these weird smudges on the kid's file, and Janet's like, that's from my tears, where I cried over it after you died. And the guy's like, relax, you're not even the fucking love interest. Okay, the you're fuck the, like, are the you? third female lead in this Just, movie. There's a Jesus. fridge right there. Come on. <laughs> Just, you know what Jesus. happens. So the FBI agent, he's going to go see Kirk and find out for sure, God damn it. And Cloris is going with him because she's yeah. his sidekick. She's the best with this. She's like, I am a cop. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am a cop, too. I'm going with okay, you. Okay, Emmy Award winner Cloris Lee. Yeah, right, right. I'm a cop, too. <laughs> Say, I'm a fire truck. <laughs> Make the noise. <laughs> So, okay, so now we cut to Kirk's boring-ass fucking date with Chelsea. Like, I love that these two are in, these two are married. And Kirk is, like, 19 at this point, right? Like, so, like, they, they, they can't be, have been married for more than six fucking months. And there is no chemistry whatsoever. Oh. I like the fir first thing she says. She's like, so, I have alive parents. You? Oh. <laughs> He's like, zero. You have two? So, cool. having, cool. having dead parents, that's, part of, that's a bummer, huh? It's like, yeah. Yeah. Sure is. She does the major look thing. Oh, I wanted Classic. it so. I wanted so badly for him to start like hysterically crying. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. It says that the temptations of the devil begin with deception. She's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man. I just wanted some farm boy dick shit. Jesus. <laughs> How old's the black kid? Is he... <laughs> Did you say 12? Oh. So, all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. So... <laughs> as long as he gets up in the first 24 hours. Right. Just, yeah, right, no. So, so meanwhile, okay, so Cloris and FBI Jack are driving to Kirk's farm. She's telling him the first half of Kirk's backstory, right? His adoption backstory, that she was going to adopt him, but then... You know, his parents had one of them, you know, and, and they needed a real kid that worked. Yes. So legit story. She was like, you know, after they rolled snake hives, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I felt so bad taking a good one, you know. Oh, no. Because nobody, li- nobody likes to be like, oh, what's that? More blocks. All right. Wow. <laughs> so, Jesus. Wanted to balance it out, you know? And for, and for his part, Jack Daniels is going like, can we talk about the fucking weather or something, man? Can we? It's like me trying to host this fucking show. <laughs> he literally does. She goes like, but the Loomises were so sad, I gave him away. He's the only one I've ever wanted to keep. Two, three, four. It's snowing outside. <laughs> it is. Because Cloris Leachman was allowed to improvise all of her life. Yeah, right, moving. right. She was blackout drunk the entire time. <laughs> yeah, and no Jack memory. Daniels wasn't. You yeah. know, he had to say whatever it was. He was, was the was, author of yeah. the movie. <laughs> Desperately trying to keep his masterpiece on track. Right. So, okay, so then we cut back to the house. So Kirk is still out on the state. Now, Violet is at home with the kids. There's a knock on the door when, when Cloris and, and Jack Daniels get there. Now she has to lie, right? She has to go to the door and lie. She's not very good at it. Okay, this is not the first scene, but definitely the most obvious scene where I feel like part of this movie's mythos is that intellectually disabled people can't lie like a magical curse. Right, right, like liar, liar. Right, yes. we try her watching and she's like, the pen is blue. Like, <laughs> it's very, it's problematic to a different magical degree. <laughs> so, but yeah, but so she's like, they're like, do you, you don't have any kidnapped kids here, do you? And she's like, uh, do you do? You have kidnapped kids here. God damn it. Now, I will point out that in this scene and the last scene, Violet does do a better job of lying than Kirk Cameron. She does, right, right, because she doesn't tell the Cloris Leachman, you're dead in yeah. heaven now. Yeah. She doesn't invoke the supernatural at all. Right, right, exactly. She's like, you can't come in, and they're like, okay, bye. And he's like, she's like, see, no gods, no angels. Didn't have to do any of that. <laughs> Just no thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but Jack Daniels, he can tell there's something going on there. Uh, but, you know, what are a couple orphan kidnapped kids? You know, he'll come back tomorrow. Let this stew for a little he's bit. He's like Mr. Roper in this scene. He really like, he's, is. Mr. Roper's going to find out about the orphan kidnapping. <laughs> and the musicians had to do that music again. Right. Which was fun. I'll come back later. <laughs> so he, he, they leave, and, and Violet turns to the two kids, and she's like, okay. My brother hasn't been entirely honest with you. And we cut the scene there, right? <gasps> but the next morning, he wakes up, uh, Kirk wakes up, and it turns out that she's actually told new additional lies. Yeah. She's made it even more complicated. She's built like a weird D&D mythos that he's got to do. <laughs> right. Yeah, Jussie Smollett's like, no, she explained to us about the good angels and the bad angels and how they're at war in heaven and everything. And I'm like... Jossie, do you want to get a fucking schism? Because this is how you get a fucking schism. <laughs> now the wand of seven part, the seventh part is broken in half. <laughs> and there's eight, <laughs> so it does make sense. <laughs> for seven. So. Adds to seven. Yeah. I really wanted her to just make up a bunch of embarrassing lies for Kirk. Like, Jossie comes up and he's like, hey man, she told us that you have to do the Macarena every 48 seconds or you'll die. <laughs> and Kirk Cameron's just like, yeah, no, you're right, man. I do have to do the Macarena every... Speaking of the Macarena, side note, I have shenanigans time. Okay. I, have, I have decided to tell my son one lie. And that is whenever the Macarena comes on and his baby makes music, I tell him that I created the Macarena. <laughs> so that at some point in my son's life, the Macarena will come on. And he'll be like, 
My dad invented that. Shit. <laughs> and everyone will be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you lying piece of shit. Because what would be the point of having a kid if you couldn't prank war the motherfucker, exactly, right? Exactly, right? So, right, Heath's mom. <laughs> so, you laugh, but like six of the parents in this room are like, I'm absolutely doing that. I'm yes, doing that. right? Fuck yeah. Doing that job. I'm texting my son right now. He's 15. I'm texting him right now. Did you know? So, meanwhile, so FBI Jack. He's through fucking around, right? He's going back to this house now as the next day, I guess, and he's going to find those orphan kids in Kirk's fucking basement or whatever. And Gloris Leachman is like, no, I'm sure that they'll be fine. There's no hurry. And he's like, what if he's a murderer, a kid murderer? And she's like, that would explain a lot. Now, I want to clarify that Jack Daniels, through the rest of this film, through every second of the rest of this film, will do nothing but pause it the darkest yes. psychosexual horrors yes. out loud in this made-for-TV film. <laughs> and this is the very... It was like, no, trust me, he is fucking the shit out of those kids. <laughs> They're barely human at this point. They're mostly... Oh, Jesus at what point? It's like the ship of Theseus, but with common children. That's oh, what I'm Jesus telling you. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. I'm just telling you what dude. he says in the movie. I didn't say it. The movie's exact quote, it's the ship of these oh. but with common children. Dash, little piece of heaven. Okay. I have to wait until the laughter dies down. And get Put a it on cut. IMDb. So, so, okay, so Kirk goes out to, we get Kirk going out to the barn to confront Violet about all the new extra lies that she's told, right? Tells her to fuck all the way off, and she's like, you know, honestly, my lies are way better than yours. But it's just, you know, that's just how it is. But before he can correct her, Chelsea shows up. Again, she shows up in the barn, and we have to have the whole weird moment where, oh, it's just getting to be too much, and he can't keep track of all the different lies. Jussie comes up to her, and she says, wait a minute, how did you die? And she goes, fucking what? Wait a minute. And Kirk goes, oh, it's just a game Violet made up. Classic game of death. Yeah. Improv troop. We're yes. just doing a, a bit. Don't worry about All it. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out. We are Slam Fest. Yes. <laughs> We're going to need a location and a way that you die. <laughs> I heard cancer. Come okay. at ping pong. All right. But then she's like, you know, he's like, hey, can you like leave this scene and come back in a different scene now that you've served your purpose? She's like, I sure can. Sure can. That's all I'm going to do in this film, actually. So then we got to Cloris and the FBI agent. They got a fucking flat tire on the way to us. And like, what a stupid, shitty-ass, stupid fucking thing to put in your goddamn movie. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, have them leave later or something or be further away. Right. And it's, again, only so that they can have a conversation where she's like, no, I assure you, this is probably just an adorable plot of a Christmas movie. And he's like, trust me, people kill kids way more <laughs> often than they kidnap them, especially around Christmas. He says That's that. That's exactly what he, he says. He does. He He's like, does. I don't know what it is, but that weird time. You know where you're kind of half-assing it at work between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Pedophiles are the opposite. They're just... <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> they get to work. He says he's fixing the tire, and he goes like, oh, and at this point, the backup, the SWAT team is going to get there before we get there, right? And she's like, you called backup? She seems like just, like, offended, right? Like, like you don't think I can fucking handle this? <laughs> I've been your sidekick for this whole fucking movie. I'm Cloris and now you're calling fucking yes. Leachman. I have seven <laughs> Emmys. Yeah. I escaped out of that straight jacket at the beginning of the movie. Remember, <laughs> I slammed my shoulder into the lock. Oh, my God. Crazy billionaire remake. <laughs> Lethal Weapon 4. Cloris Leachman is both Mel Gibson <laughs> and... Jet Li. Jet Li. Fuck yes. And everyone else... A Muppet. Yeah! <laughs> Your Patreon pledges are just a dollar away from making yes, this yep. happen, people. All right. So, so we cut back to the farm, and they're loading up for the big getaway, right? He knows the FBI's on to him now. So Leachman they're getting all weapon, of the... by the way. It's called Leachman. 
<laughs> no, that was worth going back for. That was I medically it. important. I'm so sorry. Actually, I, was gonna, I was literally going to choke on my own vomit. No, no you're that. good. We're running long, and it's, I'm, it's worth it. It's fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> also, Kirk tries to leave the fucking dog at this point. He's like, the dog can't come. And everyone, like, the Heath goes, fuck you, loud <laughs> enough. And he's like, fine, the dog can come. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. He leaves a note on the rusty tractor for Chelsea. Right? He told her, he told her meet me at the rusty tractor later, and now he's got to leave her a little note. What would that note say? I don't know. It would describe what, that you're going to be a fugitive kidnapper of orphans now. <laughs> I want to continue our flirtation, though. <laughs> so, so meet us at a motel. Oh, yes. yeah, right, right. Meet me later at the motel while I'm on the run for the law. For kidnapping children, yeah. yeah. And she'll go. She yes, she does. Up. Well, okay, that is the most realistic thing about the movie because everyone knows that's how Chelsea girls. Noble yeah, exactly. and Kirk Cameron yeah. met in real life. Yeah. <laughs> so then we cut to her, and this is a weird fucking decision. She has two dead ducks in a bag. Again, I am not making any of this shit up. Okay. She has two dead ducks in a bag, and she's walking down the thing. She's going like, hey, Kirk, how do you like that your dead ducks? Do you like... Dead, I have multiple. I have too many dead ducks. Hey, hey, Kirk, I have too many dead ducks. You know what, live ducks? I have the opposite. <laughs> you know that time between Thanksgiving and Christmas Jeez. where all the ducks just seem super <laughs> fragile and you feel more alive by them not being? <laughs> what did she learn to flirt by, from a fucking pet cat? She's like, I brought you dead animals. <laughs> so... The Heath and Wright School of Flirtation. <laughs> right? Yeah. What is happening? You're still just... <laughs> Never help. She just so... flipped Heath the double bird, for those of you who can't see it. <laughs> I'll give you some duck. Now she's tearing yeah. up his baby pictures? <laughs> That's not nice. So, okay. So Kirk and the gang get away in the nick of time. Chelsea comes across the note, so she's in the know now. We cut back to the camper, and this is so they put the the sister and princess in the back of the camper with the dog. Not quite the back of the truck, but not quite not the back of the truck either. They weren't strapped to the top like Mitt Romney, at least. Yeah, that's good. It's <laughs> close. Yeah, no, you're right. Could be worse. So, and then and Jossie is in the front seat, but like sitting down in the floorboards with his pellet gun, by the way. All I wanted was, at this, it's a weird thing, I wanted Jussie Smollett to shoot Kirk Cameron in the face with a gun. And I wrote that down, and then I was like, that's a weird sentence to write down. <laughs> You're like, but I did. But it is what I want, yeah. Welcome really to the club, buddy. Right? Yeah. So Kirk Cameron explains at this point that, no, that they, you know, they weren't really in heaven this whole time. He's not really dead. He's been making this shit up at all, the whole time. He's really a kidnapper. And Jussie's like, yeah, I knew it was... There wouldn't be this many fucking white people if it was heaven. <laughs> come on. Come on. But he's like, but it is a real FBI chase, though. That's pretty exciting, right? And he's like, but I'm the, I'm the hostage. <laughs> oh, it's good. Dude, what the uh, fuck? Oh, you're going to be on the news. <laughs> Your name's going to be blue on Wikipedia. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right. All right. The child death, okay. The annotation of it oh, is in the internet so history. <laughs> Don't keep a record. Oh, oh no, hi, hyperlink. I think we can all agree when a child dies, we should just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> As a society, <laughs> is what my audience thinks. Apparently. Oh. So, <laughs> all right, all right. Wow. So, meanwhile. Cloris and FBI Jack are searching through his empty house now. They they love they letting her do part of the search, right? Like he was downstairs with the SWAT team or whatever. And he's like, "Let Cloris do a room, guys. Just please, please. She really wants. She's this been my, is my old the whole lady friend. Movie. She'd like to be part of me." <laughs> <laughs> the seventy-five people that we now have in Kirk's living room <laughs> running at this um, operation. And this is, of course, they find that, that he's got his phone locked away in the basement, which is a super kidnappy thing to do, right? One of the FBI agents comes in at this point. He goes, uh, sir, we found a couple of dead ducks in a bag. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck's going on now. Do you think the neighbor's trying to get some dick? I don't know. <laughs> How does that fit into this plot? 
Jack uses this as a moment, right? He looks at Cloris. He's like, oh, look who's taking tiny lives. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Somebody was wrong while we were changing the tire. <laughs> I'm not going to rub it in because I don't want to be in trouble. <laughs> so, okay, so we cut back to the truck. Jussie is not amused. He's like, hey, man, like, you know, this, that's a pretty fucked up thing to do. And Curtis like, you're way better off than you would be at the farm upstate. That's debt. Okay, that's just a euphemism for debt. But Jesse doesn't believe him, and he doesn't believe that this is a good thing. And he's like, but I knew it wasn't heaven because I don't believe in God. Right? Yeah, shit's getting serious now. And he says, what? You don't believe in God? He's like, God can't answer prayers. I prayed for a fucking donut, and that guy couldn't even handle it. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking good, Jesse. Yeah. That's, you're right, yeah. Like, I mean, I could get you a fucking donut. I'm not omnipotent. Pulls out a pair of dice. I'm about to fuck up your worldview, my dude. Are you ready? So, yes. <laughs> no, but here, well, here's the fucked up answer that Kirk Cameron yes. gives. He goes, oh, God answered your prayers. He just said no. <laughs> and look, I know in the context of this movie, it's about a donut. But what we know about this child is that he's an orphan whose mom is in jail for the crack. Yep. He probably also prayed for some <laughs> non-donut related activities. <laughs> Not getting kidnapped with a quaalude yeah. by yeah. Kirk Cameron. Right. God said no. And, <laughs> right. Right. And the answer from Kirk Cameron was pray better, though. Right, right. Sometimes when you ask for a donut, God sends you a quaalude brownie. Yeah. <laughs> so Oh, uh, who wants to buy that pillow out in the <laughs> lobby? <laughs> um, Put it on a sweater for Gam Gam to die in. <laughs> so meanwhile, okay. So the FBI is still. Sometimes when you pray for a donut, God sends you a quaalude brown. <laughs> so. And there's like a snowy cabin. <laughs> so. So meanwhile, the FBI. I love it. Morgan said, "There's no. You know, there's no fucking way you're gonna get done by nine. I'm like, no, we'll get by the time. We'll get what we can do. <laughs> So meanwhile, the FBI is coordinating their manhunt from Kirk's dining room still. Cloris once again points out, you know, he's not really the kidnapping type. They're like, he ran from us with children that he took. This is definitional. Now, why are you still saying this? You literally cannot be right. FBI Jack is like, he's going to murder suicide at the end yes. of this fucking movie. A real quote from the movie. Again, this children, yes. a little piece of heaven with TV's Kirk Cameron. Well, he'll kill those kids and then he'll kill himself after he does a mass shooting at a school. Yes, that's really what he says. Exact words. Let's cut to a commercial for AIDS. <laughs> Drink your oval team. <laughs> so. Taste something sweet before the dark. <laughs> and then we get... We get Kirk and the gang, they're at a, a motel now, and this is so fucking stupid. What a stupid addition to your goddamn script. Kirk has run out of gas. At, at a, a motel. motel parking lot, yes! So he ran out of gas as he pulled into the spot. I mean, he must have run out of or they pushed the camper there. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, I'll have to walk to the station the next day. And, and, and Jesse Small is like, oh, I guess this will be pivotal to the plot in some way, huh? And this will matter? And he goes, no, we're actually going to get caught right here. <laughs> we're never going to move this vehicle again. This has no purpose whatsoever. But just then there's a, there's a oh, the, <laughs> the kid, Jesse comes in and he's like, hey, I found some stuff in your truck, including this giant knife. And Kirk Cameron thinks it, picks it up and looks at it like he's thinking, this would be a great murder-suicide implement, yes. really, honestly. Like, we, we might as well see, like, a doodly dude to the guy being like, he's gonna kill those kids as <laughs> yes, soon as... right! Just a flash-forward to him wearing Jussie as a suit. Oh, <laughs> I'd fuck me. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'd fake a hate crime against me. Exactly. <laughs> Now I see why I didn't take the noose off. It's because it looks amazing. <laughs> okay, interesting. Again, I'm finding... All right, yeah, yeah. So, but in addition to a giant knife that, again, will not factor into the plot in any way, he also found a letter from Kirk Cameron's birth mother, right, that, he, that Kirk had never read before. Oh, it's as bad as you think it is, and then some. But before we can get to that, there's a knock at the motel door. It's Chelsea, the love interest, 
he called her and he's like, hey, you know, I, I'm in a, a motel with a couple of kidnapped children. You want to come by? And she's like, yeah, I want to come by. <laughs> you had me at motel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any, like, dead ducks, do you? Because <laughs> I'm in a motel room with two children. <laughs> and she shows up. Yep, sure did. Boo, Heath, boo. <laughs> so, I'm with the audience. I'm just telling you, I'm reflecting <laughs> for you. I'm helping you. So then we... We cut back to the FBI team, and Cloris is like, all right, all right, murder, suicide, you got me. He has a camper, here's the license plate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then we cut back to the hotel, where Chelsea seems surprisingly cool with him being a serial kidnapper, but she does ask, she's like, so, you know, why? <laughs> all this, a whole plot I mean, of this the movie. Plot. Yes, yeah. right, why? Why the script? It's so dumb. It's, he's like, well, you know, you steal one because, you know, I just wonder if you could get away with it. And then, what you do? oh, man, it's really addictive. Then it gives you a break from work because you're like, oh, I'm taking my 15. I'm going to kidnap a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you can't eat if you haven't had one. Okay, I'd be like, you're a kid. it's getting awfully confessional. <laughs> um, but then he gets Chelsea to read him the letter from his biological mother. And this is just like the writer just going like, wait, is it sad enough yet? No? No? So we want to make it sadder? Great, because she's like, so, you know, I'm 13 years old, and I'm an orphan, and I was raped, and I'm blind. She talks about being blind, like me trying to start a fight with Tim on our Facebook <laughs> message. Oh boy, do I hate being blind, let me tell you. Oh, what a real blindo I am. <laughs> I looked up some slurs for blindos online. <laughs> a real nosy. <laughs> At one point, she says, I'm glad I'm blind, because if I saw you, I wouldn't have had the strength to give you away. Implied sentence. But luckily I am blind, so fuck off. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but of course, the whole story, though, that it's, it's like, oh, you're, this is really sad. But the thing that's sad is that there's a taboo against, against abortion and that this poor fucking girl just didn't get an abortion. Right? That's the terrifying and sad thing in here. But of course, they're not going to admit that. And she, she ends the letter. Can I talk about the way she ends the letter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Giving you up is harder even than being blind. <laughs> Tim, you've done both. <laughs> Just kidding. You've given up Kirk Cameron, haven't you? <laughs> he kept the kid. So, Tim has a son. So, uh, Sometimes I'm what like, I'm doing? about to tell a joke, and then I don't. And I'm like, oh, no! That was just a lie. <laughs> but now I think it's funny, so I'm just going to keep yeah, saying Yeah, I know you it. are. You sure are. Ask Andy Wilson. <laughs> so, so, and then, but then it gets to the end of the letter, and the FBI agents scream over a megaphone, Kirk Cameron, we know you're in there with the kidnapped kids. There's only like six minutes left of this movie. We need to wrap it up. So you have three minutes to release the hostages or we're coming in after you. Do they give you time exactly like that? <laughs> On the, the megaphone, the FBI, you have three... We brought a clock from the local high school basketball. Right. <laughs> yes. Like you have to release the shot before... Yeah, right. <laughs> You have three minutes for denouement speeches. <laughs> so, We're doing a Waco Motel thing. I was rooting so hard for a Waco Motel oh, thing at this point. Yeah. Right. So Janet hard. Reno just drives the tank yeah. over <laughs> Kirk Cameron. Exactly. <laughs> all right, so Janet Reno jokes they're all about. So yeah, there's some weird, weird For the audience, younger you... member of our audience, Jan who's Janet, Janet, Reno who's Jan Janet Reno was the attorney general. Wow. Oh, my yeah, God, you got it. it. Holy shit. Under, under which president? Bill Clinton. Yes. Yes. You're ruining the format. No, but it's more important. She drove a tank over children, which yes, is right. very... Yes, right. She did. That's accurate. It's she very did. funny, because the parents were like, you'll be safe here. <laughs> <laughs> and she did it on TV, and we were like, Ugh. and she was like, what did you fucking expect? <laughs> 
I'm the original so- Reno 911. Bam! <laughs> and hey, can I say, we will kill your children on national television? Oh, Jesus Christ. Worked on crazy Christians for like three years. Three years, <laughs> they were like, we're fine. We're just going to read our sad book. We're just, we're good. Our guy's on a T. It's fine. We'll- <laughs> Better behave or Janet Reno's coming. <laughs> so. Finish your carrots or Janet <laughs> Reno will creep through the window. So. Okay, so, we, we, so he brings Princess up to speed real quick. He's like, I'm so sorry that this all had to come to a head before you could serve any purpose in this movie. And the FBI comes in and is like, we're down to two minutes now. Okay, this was the best because he was like, he had his three minutes to do speeches. So he's like, here's the thing, everybody. I wanted a family. I should have asked before kidnap. You have two minutes left. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, sorry. Okay, it's two minutes left. I should have asked. You have one minute yeah, yeah. left. It was so fast. He's like, what the fuck is happening? All right. We're going out. Jesse, you want to do, like, Blaze of Glory? Or... <laughs> no, I timed it. It was 21 seconds between the two. I wanted him to send out Jesse first. The cops shoot him. <laughs> you know. So. Uh, we got him. Everyone else can go home. <laughs> A little piece of heaven. So Kurt Cameron walks out, hands up. And then everybody else, all the kids and the sister and everything walk out with their hands up too. The dog doesn't. That would have been adorable, right? Oh. Then they really missed out on that one. But they all walk out and they're like, we're a family now, so you have to take us as a family. And the cops are like, well, I mean, we're going to take all of you into custody, I guess. Did you think we were going to ask you guys to call yourselves an Uber pool? <laughs> <laughs> See, but this is like supposed to be the heartwarming Stockholm Syndrome moment. And then we cut immediately to this, uh, not a courtroom, but like a courtroom-esque setting, like a judge's office with a stenographer in it and all the named characters. Yeah, it's a family kidnapping, so it's just like in somebody's living room. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly, family court. The family court is in a living room. I don't, don't want to yeah. have to do the whole courtroom thing. Why don't you guys just come back to my chambers and I'll say the seven craziest sentences <laughs> oh my God. in film history. So, guys, this movie <laughs> is about to get so much more batshit fucking crazy. You know how it's been totally reasonable so yeah. far? Right. The They're going to ramp it up. Every second for the last 90 seconds of this movie, it'll get twice as fucking weird as it was, right? Mm-hmm. So the judge is about to say, he's like, you know, you're going to have to go to jail. For, and then Justin hey, stands up. Out. He's like... You can do a timeout in court, right, if you're a kid? And, and the judge is like, well, of course, obviously, you can do a obviously. timeout. Everybody gets one timeout. What, you get, what, you what else would you? Judge, I'm going to let you finish, but Beyonce <laughs> did the best kidnapping <laughs> of all time. <laughs> that joke got so much better this year, right? Oh, it was an amazing joke already. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah. Come on, yay. <laughs> so, so instead though, Jesse says, and I quote, you know, he says, he says, the judge, he's not, a, he's not a criminal. He's a, he's a good person. He says, quote, Will is no criminal. He's a proper homeboy. <laughs> know what I'm saying, judge? Yeah, that's the cr- that's the correct cringe noise. Yes. Um, yep. Noah, Keith, don't say it enough. But since it's Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Pedophiles are in season. They're working hard. Yep, yep, yep. You guys are proper homeboys. Aw. Aw. Let's bring it in for a big group hug. Big group hug. Aw. Got, I got the camera pans out, and we're all in a snow globe that Marsh is holding. So yeah, so then Princess speaks up. Princess has a, a little moment too where she stands up and she says, I also think Kirk Cameron shouldn't go to jail. He has a nice house. And then, <laughs> that's what she said. He has a nice orphan kidnapping farmhouse. Again, yep. abused okay. girl is like, hi, sorry, just real quick. I am actively being physically abused. The, Shush! It's the sister's turn to do her mom. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, and the sister doesn't have anything to say, so Jussie decides to take her turn too. And I guess the fucking judge's heart grew three sizes that day. So 
So he sentences Kirk Cameron's house. <laughs> stay with me here. That's correct. What's happening? To be an orphanage. <laughs> and, and he names the orphanage. He says, it's the, it'll be the Cecil, whatever your dad's name was. I named the orphanage I'm sentencing you to be after your dead father. Yes. In my head, that's what he does for all crimes. <laughs> like, some guy blew an 8.2, and he's like, oh, man, they're going to take my license away. He's like, I sentence your car to be an orphanage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets even fucking weirder. Because he also, he sentences Cloris Leachman to be his helper. Yeah. She didn't commit any crimes. She's a cop. Yeah, she's a cop. <laughs> but just to be clear, the orphan kidnapper was sentenced to be in charge of more kids. Yes. Yes. Like, I sentence you to smoke the whole bag <laughs> of orphans. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, this judge used to work for the Catholic Church. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Move you to a different orphanage. So now, and also, let's keep in mind that the girl, the that princess, wasn't a fucking orphan, right? He gets to keep her, too. I forgot she wasn't an orphan. The judge sentences him to get to keep the little girl. He kind of sentenced her to be an orphan. <laughs> You missed the scene where he killed her parents. He showed up. <laughs> right. He had the cow killer from No Country for Old Men. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing a Christmas bit. So. <laughs> Judge Orphanage strikes again. <laughs> clack, clack. Oh, I committed a murder. I sentenced myself to be an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Bad judge. So, okay, we have one last scene to do right, really quick. Cause, so now we get Jesse and, and Kirk and, and his sister and Princess, and they're all out in the, in the pig sty or whatever. And the pigs are having babies. It's Christmas Day, and one of the pigs is having babies. I know, just, but bear with me. And, they, and Kirk says, well, that's the first pig born on Christmas Day. And I'm like, is that the pig Messiah? Does that make it? Because I will watch the fucking sequel. If there's a pig Jesus in it. Ooh, ooh, he could put like a bunch of demons into people and make them run off of a cliff. Oh, it'd be great. That'd be so good. Hog heaven. Yeah. Because pigs. He'd be sentenced by sausage pilot. What? Pontius. Pont no, no, that's close. That's, that was close. That was close. Pot-bellied pig pont pilot. There was. So... Give him a second. But then, and then, and then the, 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 the sister, Violet. <laughs> Poor sign from God. Poor sign so from good. God. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then, and that's right, I had to end it somehow, you know. <laughs> We're already 25 minutes over Midnight in the Garden of Good and Squee! That was pretty good, too. Oh, it's all right. Turn swatter into swine. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well done, sir. Well done. We just sit here doing <laughs> the next <laughs> until everyone just trickles out. How did you like the live show? Bad. Really Fucking bad. bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Yeah, but they are about to tie it all together. Don't worry. So they go, what should we are name they? this little... Yeah, they go, what should we name this little pig? And the sister goes, heaven. And they're like, see? It all ties Ooh. together now. It's all... Little piece of heaven. All, yeah, right. the movie. All, all the other baby pigs can go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't fit into the no, title. So the not, not unless one of them is named Little Peas. Or, know? yeah, of. That one's <laughs> named of. Yeah. There you go. Fuck yourself. All right, so I, and that's the end. I guess the moral of the story appears to be kidnappings can save Christmas. <laughs> that is the moral, though. Yes, I, unless it's unless it's really about the pig messiah, in which case, I'm gonna give this another watch. And I guess on that note, because we are 27 minutes late now on this, but on that note, there's nothing left to do but leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. <laughs> It's 
someone, some hero, went on to make a deep fake of that scene with Kirk Cameron dressed up as MLK, and they got eight bajillion Heath points. <laughs> good job. That person was Jesse Smollett. Oh, okay, yeah. He has a bunch of Heath points. That's good. Yeah, no, he does. We he, he, already, he already had a lot of them. Yeah. When they ate bacon from that Christmas pig, nobody made a little piece of heaven joke. <laughs> and that's kind of sad. <laughs> Kirk Cameron would go on to have a way sadder family and a way dumber sister. <laughs> So no, no, Eli, you can shenanigans all you want. I just want to, I want you to be aware that you're cutting into uh, Anna's time. Wow. Everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright.